I didn't realize it at first, but vanilla's got thousands of tiny seeds inside that are growable. So I got my hands on a pod to see if we could try to grow a vanilla plant. I've never opened up one of these things, so I couldn't find the seeds at first. But then I realized that the seeds are so tiny, the dark flesh inside the actual pods are the seeds. And my mind was blown. At first I thought you could just grow the vanilla seeds on paper towel like most seeds that come from inside your fruits. I even tried it myself. But when they just molded over, I realized the problem was that the seeds are so minuscule, they're not the most suitable seeds to achieve the paper towel germination target. But I figured, if you can't grow vanilla seeds on paper towel, then how would they grow at all? And then I soon learned that with vanilla, it's a bit different. Vanilla is the fruit of white orchids, or should I say the seed pods of white orchid plants. And since the seeds are barely visible to the human eye, you need something called a culture or tissue growth medium, which is a solid, liquid, or semi-solid that supports the growth of a population of microorganisms or cells. So basically, it's just a medium that'll allow the seeds to actually grow because without it, they won't. Different types of media are used to grow different types of cells. So for plants, it's the cell culture, and for microorganisms like fungi or bacteria, it's the microbiological culture that's used. What this is actually called though is the micropropagation of vanilla, which is basically just a gelling agent that you push the seeds into in order to grow them. So of course, I got some growth medium, and I really hope I got the right culture needed to grow our vanilla. I had no idea how to start. I don't really even know what to do, but once my culture medium arrived, I was ready to start the attempt at growing the second most expensive spice in the world after saffron. I knew I needed to somehow put the liquids together and then put the seeds inside of that and it's a good thing the culture medium came with a little instruction booklet bring it to a boil oh no autoclave at 121 degrees for 15 minutes cool to 50 degrees and portion equally into petri dishes so i opened up the vanilla examined the thousands if not millions of tiny minuscule seeds took a minute honestly to appreciate nature and thank the universe and then got to work Let's get started. I scaled out 60 milliliters of distilled water and added it to 1.8 grams of agar. Measure 1.5 grams. 1.8, that's good. Smells kind of funky. Mixed it up good with a cotton swab. Cotton swabs. And then headed over to the kitchen to get this boiled up. Now can I boil this? Heat in a boiling water bath. I'm scared. Pour our medium into the pot. I started to boil it and as I mixed it, mix that up, it smells so bad. I learned that with vanilla, many botanists grow it with tissue culture inside a flask with agar, but also with other specific nutrients like glucose, sucrose, carbohydrates, or other vitamins. Technically, you don't need the mixture, but it's said to help the vanilla grow pretty well. And once they do grow, then you transfer them to a new medium about every six to 12 months. And at the end of it, they should be transferred about five or six times until you can plant them in soil. So I knew that this little science plate would be the first home of many for these little seedlings. And after our mixture came to a boil, I was just about ready to add it to our little plates. I'm going to pour it in my medium. I had enough for two plates. I think I have enough for two. So I figured on one plate, we could add the seeds right on top without mixing those into the nutrient agar. And with the second plate, we could try pushing the seeds into the gel to see if that helps them grow better or even counteract any mycelium or mold that infiltrates our vanilla home since we didn't add any other vitamins into the mixture. So we're gonna let that cool off and then we are gonna put our vanilla seeds in. So let's get those ready. And in the process of micropropagation of vanilla, you're supposed to push the seeds into the gelling agent in order for them to grow so I was pretty pumped about the second plate because that's the one we pushed the seeds into and we had two experiments to see which worked better for sure for sure and yeah you guessed it this is usually done in a science lab but if you can find nutrient dense agar online you already know you do not need a lab for that we do however have to be really careful to work inside of a clean and sterile environment so I'm really sorry if there are any biology majors watching this and you notice I'm not as sterile as you would be in a lab or as you would like me to be but I definitely am trying my best so if you got any vanilla micro propagation growing tips please do not hesitate to comment below I will take them into account I promise plus we already know it's all trial and <coughs> so the only way that we'll know if this works or not is by doing it learning by doing is my favorite thing ever evidently based on all of the projects that we're testing it so I got back to my little table and got ready to add our seeds into their new homes for the next little while I've got both of my agars here you can see them they're now 
not shaky anymore. We're gonna put some seeds in here. See, boop, boop. One, two. Take our vanilla. I put this in the hot water so that it's sterile as possible. Let's get the seeds out as much as I can. Getting them all over my hands. I really hope I did this right, but I'm a first timer. Just gotta get them out like so. Probably a few hundred thousand seeds. I'm gonna leave this one as is, and then I'm gonna try and mix it into the agar in this one. The rest of these seeds I'm gonna use to make vanilla syrup. So many seeds on my fingertips. Cover those seeds in the agar. Just mix that up all in there. Get it covered in that agar, like so. And as I added our tiny seeds onto their plates. Okay, so there's one. I got pretty fascinated by vanilla in and of itself and learned that vanilla actually is not always real. What I mean by that is you may be familiar with vanillin. It's a chemical compound that basically replicates the taste of vanilla, but it's not real vanilla. It's a lab-made synthetic version of the real vanilla and it's a compound used for things like flavoring ice cream, making candies, sweetening soft drinks, baking cakes, but it isn't real. So when you're getting your vanilla flavoring, whether in the full bottle or in your coffee at the shop, make sure you know that it's that good good. Here's our second one. We're not gonna be mixing that up at all. We're just gonna put the cover right on. And now, I guess we wait. Vanilla is my favorite plant to use as flavoring because it's in fact a plant. So the real vanilla to me is better than something like caramel that's made solely from ingredients like butter and sugar and cooking it down to make a makeshift vanilla or vanillin. I just love that vanilla is the only edible fruit of the orchid family and I'm already terrible at keeping orchids alive, but listen, if 3,000 tons of vanilla are produced every day, then that means the demand for vanilla is on the rise and we can surely grow it into a plant and maybe not mass produce it, but have homegrown vanilla seed pods that we can use for so many different things for years to come. If you control the food supply or at least your own family's food supply, then you don't need to rely on any public entity for your food and that to me is power. I also just recently found out that most grocery stores put a peel on their fruits, which is an edible outer coating to help keep the fruits shiny and make them last twice as long, which isn't normal. The company that makes it doesn't actually say what ingredients are in there. They just say it's an edible, healthy outer coating and that they use ethyl acetate and heptane as solvents, which are chemicals. So how could that be healthy? That is basically a horror story to me. And that's why I recommend that you start attempting to grow your own food at home. It doesn't just have to be fun projects like vanilla micro propagation. Grow all the vegetables you can because they can grow in like 12 weeks and fruits take longer so if you have a warm climate and the right zone, plant a lemon seed in the ground. You may have lemons in 10 years. Anywho, finally after what felt like eternity, I got the thousands of tiny seeds into their new homes. Currently, it's been about four weeks and this is what our vanilla mixtures currently look like. The one we did not mix the seeds into has unfortunately molded over, but the one that we did push the seeds into looks promising and there is no mold, so I'd say it needs a few more months to sit there and micro-propagate until we can transfer it into its next home. And since vanilla seed pods come from white orchids, and white orchids are so difficult to keep alive, a lot of people actually don't know that orchids are seasonal bloomers, which means the flowers fall off in the winter, but they grow back in the summer. So a lot of people think they need to throw their orchids out when the flowers fall off, but you don't. They grow back. And you may have an orchid that isn't doing well because let's be honest, we all do. So don't worry, I'm gonna show you one quick method that should really help keep your orchid alive, honestly, for 20 years or more. I call it the soaking method. This orchid I got from my communal garbage room because one of my neighbors was throwing it out, so I adopted her and saved her. And listen, we all know orchids are sensitive plants. They get dehydrated fast, they like very bright lighted environments. So depending on how far gone your little child is, if you gently unpot your orchid, rinse the roots, and prune any dead roots off, and then depending how alive or not she is, cut off the bloom stem so that the plant doesn't divert all of its energy to flowering, and then start the soaking method. Soak the roots in black tea for 10 minutes with filtered or bottled water. That'll be a little nutrition boost before the real soaking method. Since it won't be ready to live in water full time just yet, you'll need to introduce a system for the orchid that alternates soaking the roots in water during the day and drying the roots completely overnight to fight against root rot and continue that process for about a week. The drying periods will give your orchid a chance to acclimatize to the changes in their environment and after about a month, you should see positive growth starting again. Plus, I've also heard that if you leave your orchid 
living just in water rather than soil or fur bark, you could also see it do much better than it would. But personally, I have not had success with letting my orchid live in just water. It has not grown back yet that way. But the soaking method has done wonders for me. Highly recommend. So patience is key, but if you end up trying the soaking method, let me know. It worked for my orchid pretty well. But just remember, orchids are special because they produce the vanilla bean seed pods. So even though they're the most difficult thing to keep alive, don't give up on her. And now we got our seeds living in their growth mediums for the next month or so. So all we gotta do now is wait. Listen, if the first successful germination of vanilla orchid seeds in a lab was in 1922, let's see if we can be the first in 2024 to successfully germinate vanilla seeds right in our very own home. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see if we can achieve the target. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and remember that on this channel, we take the seeds from inside exotic fruits and grow them into full-blown houseplants that fruit. And in this week's video, we attempted to take the seed pods from white orchids and micro-propagate them to see if we can grow our own full blown fruiting houseplant orchid vanilla seed pod. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Always know that I love you and I'll see you next week where you'll learn how coffee is made in Guatemala. This is Terry, representative for Growth Jesse. Mmm, that's good. Don't forget to subscribe.